body piercing industry as a whole is heavily, heavily invested in looking after the client. That's their main priority. The person who sits in the bedroom or in the kitchen firing holes in people is after one thing and one thing only, and that's money. You've got two options, haven't you? People who are getting pierced, they want a professional. Act like one. What I'm going to be taking you through now is the studio and the basic setup of it. Basic says you need to push towards having a cool, calm environment. If you've got thrash colour music on, it's going to get you nowhere. The client's going to be coming in already hyped up. By the time you get them on the couch, they're just going to sit there and faint straight away before you've even touched them. Calm them down. Have a calm, cool environment. Clinical as well because that's the actual impression and that's the actual standard you need to be striving for. Just to give you a nice guideline around the studio, you're going to be looking at your bench, your bench rolls. You've got gloves both sides because at some stage you might actually be working on the other side of the bed. You've got all your jewellery you need at hand, all your forceps at hand, all your needles already pre-packed, your sharp spots and your station and basically anaesthetics if you actually choose to actually use these products. The actual station itself should actually carry every single product you want to carry that piercing out. What we're also going to be teaching you today is a technique we've refined for actually stopping piercings bleeding. How it basically works is like this. When everyone usually does a piercing, the piercing and the jewellery are exactly the same calibre and size, or sometimes people will actually pierce a lot bigger than the jewellery that's necessary to be putting in. Obviously giving your body plenty enough time, time to let blood come steaming out of it. What we do is actually pierce it, the blade is actually smaller than the actual jewellery we stick in, and the process of putting the jewellery in the cannula is what stretches it. It all sounds very complicated, I know, but it breaks down like this. If you're going to actually do a 1.6mm barred piercing, you're actually going to use a 1.7mm needle. The actual blade in the needle is 1.5mm. When you actually put the jewellery in, slightly stretching the cannula to the size, it'll actually take it up to the size of one7 thus sealing the piercing by 0.2mm. It sounds very complicated, but it's a technique that works, we've refined, and it is exceedingly good as a job. You will find that hardly anybody will bleed. Right, I'm going to show you this technique a bit more close up and a bit more refined. Taking a 1.7mm needle and a 1.6 piece of jewellery, when the piercing is actually carried out, you actually reintroduce the needle slightly withhold it back onto itself so that that's there acting as a, acting as a strengthener for the actual process. Put the piece of jewellery in the end. As you can see it's slightly, very smallly enlarged the area. Withdraw the needle, discard it, run it through and you'll find that it will actually seal the piercing. What we're now going to do is do two eyebrow piercings and actually demonstrate this for you. As you can see here we've got two piercings, two eyebrows exactly the same piercings. I've got over here, I've an orange, over here I've got a grey. First thing we'll do is we'll stick the orange piercing in. As you can see we're already in a situation where we need to control bleeding straight away. Actually hold that and just jumping in front of the camera if you could just take the patch off for me there you go, it doesn't take much to actually work out the difference in the actual style and the techniques and how it actually works and benefits the client as well as your studio. Right, there you go, the actual technique is exceedingly well proven just with that example that we did. There are a couple of actual differences in certain piercings where you can and can't use this. The only one we've ever found is navel piercings. There is a great reduction in actual bleeding in regard to this piercing anyhow so personally I would recommend an orange. Your client will dance all over the bed and the concept of trying to do refined, stylized work with someone who's trying the best to actually get out the door while still getting pierced is probably not the best way to actually go forward. 
Also, the tongue piercing. It's not a problem with using that technique with tongue piercings. The only thing you do need to remember is, because it actually it's that tight and it tightens the piercings up, you do need to tell the client that if they actually abuse the piercing over the next couple of days, excessive talking, drug abuse, etc, etc, which you shouldn't be doing any help with clients or clients, then what will actually happen is the tongue will go black and blue. No, you haven't hit anything major, it's just the fact that the muscle cannot go through its normal activities. Right, what we have here is your clients, we're just going to run through some of the basic piercings that are available on the market. There are some other ones, but this particular client carries a fair arraignment of them. You've got the eyebrows and rings, eyebrows and bars, both sides of a nose pierced. You've got your librettes at the bottom. You've also got some extreme light piercing at the top. On the side here, you've got an industrial, inner conch, date at the back there, trigus, tunnels, and various other rings. On the side here, you've got a lot of scaffolding work, trigus, rings, and tunnels again. Internally, we've got a random assortment of tongue piercings as well. Right, this particular piercing, what we're going to be doing, is called the septum. Place actually up there into the nostril. It's a nice piercing, it can actually be done with a ring or a septum keeper. Some people do prefer bars, but you do find that they do actually offset the soles when they are actually going through the healing process. One of the main things, first of all, to do is have a check up for the, the client's nose. The actual soft membrane tissue that you can actually feel, the very, very soft bit between your fingers is where you want to put the piercing through. Just above that you will actually feel if there is actually any cartilage that's been broken in the time of actually having the nose pierced. This particular client has it done. What you want to do, put your initial marks on. Check the way your mark is exactly where you should be running it and then prepare yourself up for the piercing. There is a great warning with this particular style of how to do a septum piercing. I'm actually going to be clamping the underneath of the nose with my fingers. The reason being is you find you get a lot less distortion of the whole particular piercing itself and it will always sit a lot more naturally. The other side of the coin are you are pushing a needle actually through that's going to be exiting right by your fingers. Extreme caution. Yeah, stupidity is not the name of the game. In the end, you're looking after your client's actual health and yours as well. Just check your mark. Scroll the needle, return with the needle and the ring. Scroll the needle and then get actually ready to run the ring through. Remove the cannula, take the clamps off, prep the actual ring up, ready for receiving the ball. Get the circlips, steady yourself in. The quicker you can get this done, the easier it is for the client. There you go, septic piercing. What you need to do, make sure the client cleans both sides of the actual ring itself and then take care of the actual client's sneaking eyes. Nice one.